Diversity in living organisms is the next chapter. So here we are going to study about the living organisms that are generally we see in the natural world with our naked eyes we can see different organisms. Basically they include plants and animals. If you go to a park you see different kind of plants or trees and you see grass and you see different people. So you see different organisms but what is the range of that difference? So there is not much very much difference you find there. If you go to a park you see the gra grass carpet. You find all the grass plants are similar. Same. And you see so many people are coming. In terms of science if you see that there what kind of animals you see only humans you see. Rarely you find other animals. Of course if somebody is taking their dog out, pet dogs, you may see dogs. But if you go to a jungle, if you go to a forest, then if you see that there, what kind of different things you see? If you go to a thick forest, you find different kind of plants which are not similar. They are entirely different from each other. And you find the plants of different forms. You find certain plants are thin, thin, weak, creepers. You find climbers, climbers and you find bushes and you find big trees and you find giant trees giant trees which grow up to meters of height 10 meters 20 meters 30 meters and you sometimes we find trees which grow up to a height of even 100 meters. Giant redwood trees of California. So this way, if you go to a forest, that means if you go to a natural setup, not a park or a shopping mall, if you go to a natural setup, you find so many kinds of plants. And if, if you observe the animals, what sort of animals you find in a forest? You find so many insects and various birds and many animals like squirrels, rats, mongoose, squirrels and you find rabbits. What else you find there? You find fox, you find deer. And you may find tigers sometime in some of the forest you find tigers, elephants, giraffes. So there are so many animals of various kind in the forest. So if you go to a natural setup, if you observe a natural setup, you find a lot of diversity. What is this called as a diversity? Not similar. You go to a paddy field, a crop. What do you find there? In a paddy field, you find thousands of paddy plants. You go to a wheat field. So there you find thousands of wheat plants growing, all are alike. Would you call it as a diversity? No. If you go to your lawn, you see your lawn, the grass consists of all similar kind of plants. So that is not diversity. So what the diversity, the term diversity refers to variety, variety of organisms are there. So this blue planet Earth has got a variety of living forms, variety. So what is the range of this variety? Millions and millions and species of animals are there. So far no one has completely counted how many different species of organisms are there on this planet. Still they are finding different species which are not yet studied, not yet observed. There are many more places. There are certain places even though the area of the land is small, it consists of large variety of organisms. One of such example is a Galap Galapagos Island. So there are certain islands 
which consists of very beautiful, interesting creatures with very different peculiar form and functions. Variety of birds, variety of insects, plenty of things are there in this world. So, so far I am talking about the things which we can see with our naked eyes, plants and animals. Beyond that there are many creatures, living things that are existing in this world which we cannot see with our naked eye. So, what are those? So, we talked about plants and we talked about animals. The things that we cannot see are microorganisms. Microorganisms are the organisms which can be seen with the help of a microscope are called as microorganisms. There are a variety of microorganisms, number of species, number of classes groups in microorganisms. So, if you see the range, what is the range of these organisms? What sort of difference is existed between the variety of organisms? You see the microorganisms, their length is micrometers, mu m, microns, very, very, very small thousandth or ten thousandth part of one millimeter on your scale. You can imagine how much small they are. You have a ruler in your compass box and it will be having the measurement. So in that the least measurement is one mm. You make it into thousand parts, how small it is. So that is a micrometer. You make it ten thousand part, how small it is. So those are the sizes in which these microorganisms exist. So just imagine how small they are. So, this world, it consists of very tiny, tiny organisms, so tiny, the microorganisms are very tiny. So, the range, what is the range? It begins at very tiny micrometers to hundreds of meters. If you take a giant redwood tree, 100 meters height, it grows 100 meters height. So, that is the range. That is also one living organism, one organism, this microbe also one organism. Then what is the difference? See the difference. If you see an animal, you can see a blue whale. What is the size of a blue whale? So big. We can find that the size of the blue whale is very big. You can see the other animals, a rat, how small the rat is. Very small. You see the blue whale, very big. Of course, both belongs to same group. Both belongs to mammals, but in, in the same group itself, see how much of difference. If in the same group that much of difference is there, in between different different groups of animals and plants, how many differences are there? Then how do we study all these organisms? Is it possible for a person to study about each and every organism on this planet in his lifetime? Certainly not. It's not possible. No one can study about each and every organism on this planet individually even though he spent all his lifetime. It is not possible. Then what is the way? Then how we can understand this diversity? So understanding the diversity, it helps to preserve the diversity. The first major thing is we have to conserve the diversity. So somebody may think what is the benefit we have mankind? If we protect, if we go to a forest and protect all the plants and animals of different, different varieties, what benefit we get? Because always we think in the aspect of development, we think in the aspect that what benefit we have. Definitely we have a benefit. If this diversity is missing in this, on this planet, the balance in the ecosystem is disturbed. So by that the living of mankind is questionable. So the diversity is very important. We need to preserve the diversity. So that is the reason why we should understand, study the diversity. But how can we study the diversity? How can we study about all these organisms? On what basis we do that? What is the basis? Let us see.